The first thing that we may wish to do in order to solve the question is to write down some of the quantities that are given to us in this question. So for example, we are told that these raindrops strike the roof of the car with a speed of 12 meters per second. We've drawn a picture over here showing a raindrop falling downward. Now because it's falling downward, we're going to call the initial velocity of the raindrop negative 12 meters per second. Notice the negative sign indicating that that initial velocity is directed downward. And then we're given this somewhat strange quantity. It says that the mass of rain per second, and that's an unusual quantity. We don't often see mass per unit time. And they're giving us a value of 0 0.035 kilograms per second. And that, because it's mass per unit time, can be symbolized by m divided by delta t, and that is the given quantity right there. We are also told that these drops come to rest, which means that the final velocity of the raindrops is going to be 0 meters per second. And then it's also useful to write down what we're looking for. We are looking for the average force exerted by the rain on the roof. Now, because we have all of these quantities as indicated, we're going to look at the impulse momentum theorem as illustrated on the screen right here. And your goal would be to pick the two parts of the equation that capture the knowns and unknown that we're looking for. So for example, we are looking for force. We have a quantity of mass divided by unit time here, or delta t, and then we have the velocities as well. So it seems most effective to choose those two highlighted parts of the impulse momentum theorem. So we'll go ahead and write them down. And then what we want to do is solve for the quantity that we are trying to determine, which is that force. And so to do that, we can actually divide both sides of this equation by delta t. And as we will see in a moment, by doing that, we're going to be able to come up with an expression for that m over delta t. Now these delta t's will cancel out on the left side, so now we have the force is equal to this set of terms on the right hand side. Now, what we'll notice is that the mass appears in both terms in the numerator. This makes it a greatest common factor, so we can actually factor it out. So then we would have m multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, and then still underneath that is the delta t. Now if you look carefully, you will see this special quantity of mass divided by delta t. That was that quantity given to us earlier. It was the 0 0.035 kilograms per second. So we're going to be able to now simply plug in the known values. Let's go ahead and do that. And so all of those quantities have been plugged in, and now we're going to calculate this force, and it turns out to be 0.42 newtons. And you'll notice that it comes out positive. This should make sense, because if you look at the picture, you have the roof of the car right here, and the raindrop is striking the roof. And what happens is the roof is exerting an upward force on the raindrop in order to bring the raindrop to rest. So it makes sense that this force that we just calculated would have a positive value. But let's keep in mind that this is the force that the roof exerts on the raindrop. But if we go back and look at the question, the question wanted us to determine the force exerted by the raindrop on the roof. Now, of course, we all remember Newton's third law which says that if the roof exerts an upward force on the drop, then the rain will exert a downward force on the roof. So the answer here is that the rain exerts a downward force on the roof, and the magnitude of that force is going to be the 0 0.42 newtons. So again, downward and 0.42 newtons would be the correct answers to part A. We go over to part B, which asks us about hailstones. Now, this is a little unusual because what we're supposed to kind of figure out, and I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to figure this out, but we're supposed to infer basically that because they're hailstones, that when they hit the roof of the car, they're actually going to bounce upward. So you can imagine a hailstone, again, with an initial velocity, and we can use that same value. What was it? Negative 12 meters per second. But now, rather than simply coming to rest, the hailstones, based on their physical 
properties would bounce upward, so their final velocity would not be zero. It might be some positive value, and you might want to just assign an arbitrary positive value to understand the concept here. Perhaps it would be two meters per second, so a little bit of a bounce back. Now, if we go back and plug those numbers into the equation, we'll see something interesting. So why don't we actually just do it this way? Let's grab this equation, but what will change is that final velocity. We'll change it from being zero to the arbitrary number that we just selected, which was that positive two. Now, if you recalculate the net force here, you're going to get a larger number. You're going to get 0.49 newtons. Now, we don't need a numerical answer, just a conceptual answer. And the question, again, wanted us to determine what would be true about the average force on the roof. We just showed that the average force would be greater. So the hailstone would be pushing down on the roof with a greater force. And in response, the roof would be pushing upward on the hailstone with a greater average force. So the answer would be that the average force is greater. And that concludes this question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated.